Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the transport options uh, within the providers networks and between providers. So uh, I used this diagram uh, earlier uh, to talk a little bit about WAN connections and uh, access circuits, but uh, really what we're talking, I'm going to be talking about here is just introduce some of the technologies used uh, between the different providers and also within the provider's network. Okay, so service providers networks are, are complex and nowadays consist mostly of high bandwidth fiber optics. Uh, using either Sonnet, Synchronous Optical Networking, which is uh, the ANSI standard used in the US and Canada, or Synchronous Digital Hierarchy, SDH, which is everywhere or else and is an ITU standard. So uh, they're both pretty much interchangeable here and you can see uh, the different uh, digital hierarchies for both, uh, and they're just labeled either OC1 or STM0, OC3 or STM1, etc. But you can see uh, kind of the bandwidth for each. Okay, so all of this is centered around something called wavelength division multiplexing, where different wavelengths colors, frequencies over the same fiber are used for bi-directional communications. Uh, this significantly multiplies as the amount of data bandwidth that a single strand of fiber can actually support uh, and enables bi-directional bi communications over the same strand. Okay? Because we're basically just using different wavelengths to send and receive. So WDM can be divided into uh, coarse wavelength division multiplexing, CWDM, or dense wavelength division multiplexing, DWDM. So coarse wavelength division multiplexing provides eight channels with eight different wavelengths. A dense wavelength division multiplexing is similar, but just more dense. Uh, it can multiplex 40, 80, and in some cases, 160 channels of data onto a single fiber. Uh, each channel can carry up to 10 gigabits of the multiplex signal. So we're talking over a terabit here in, in many cases. But the actual distance and band bandwidth is gonna vary, um, uh, but they're increasingly being able to, they're continuing to be able to increase the amount of data that uh, especially DWDM is able to transmit. Uh, and DWDM, DWDM actually provides higher bandwidth at longer distances. Okay, uh, the other technology I wanna talk a little bit about that, you've, that you, you'll hear a lot about is what they call MPLS. Uh, MPLS is primarily a service provider technology, find it inside their cloud, but it's also being used in some places within a data center or even uh, within an enterprise, uh, large enterprise network. Uh, but MPLS stands for multi-protocol label switching. And uh, we're gonna see, I'm gonna actually show you exactly, or give you a better idea how it works in just a moment. Uh, okay, but uh, let me just kind of go, go over some of the uh, kind of bullet items here, and then I'll show you an example. MPLS is based on short path labels rather than IP network addresses. Uh, it has the ability to carry any kind of payload. It can be IP, IPv4, IPv6. It can be Ethernet. It could be something old like ATM or Frame Relay, DSL. doesn't matter. Uh, basically, it's just going to uh, what we attach or really shim a label, um, as you can see in IP here, between the I, right after the IP header. Uh, so it's going to actually tell the uh, this label is actually going to direct these labels are used to direct the traffic within the provider's MPLS cloud. And I'll show you how this works in just a moment, but it, it extends either layer two or layer through native layer three natively between the sites. I'll show you a, a, another diagram of that in a moment. And it's owned by the service provider, the MPLS cloud, but it, 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 it makes the uh, 
we have, as I'm going to show you here in a moment, uh, a branch office and a headquarters office connected via provider's MPLS cloud. We can make it look like that the uh, branch office and headquarters office are di directly connected. Okay. So the MPLS network will actually look like a single router or switch. Let me show you an example here. So here we go. Here's a layer two and layer three MPLS. A lot of times you say uh, MPLS VPN backbone because in most cases uh, VPNs are used all done within the provider's cloud because they're providing this service for, for multiple customers. And we want to keep all that secure and separate. But a layer two uh, MPLS uh, provides a layer two service across the backbone. It actually looks like in, on the left here, router one and router two would look like they're directly connected. Like there's a big ethernet switch in the middle and they'd actually share the same IP subnet address between R1 and R2. Layer three MPLS uh, would make it look like there's just a single router in the middle and uh, R1 would be sharing IP subnet with that provider's uh, uh, router here and R2 with the uh, router on this side. Uh, of course, it's multiple uh, routers, multi-layer switches within this backbone, but just to the uh, subscriber, it looks like there's just one big router there, just like it looks like one big switch here. Some of the uh, terminology, and this is beyond what the uh, curriculum for this course goes into, uh, if you're following the Cisco Networking Academy Connecting Network course, but I want to give you a little bit better idea what MPLS does. Uh, packets are, so we're going to see here's the MPLS network, here's the ingress edge uh, LSR. Uh, and then here's the egress edge LSR, looking at it for packets coming into the, and this stands for uh, label switch router LSR. So looking at it as packets coming in from customer A on this router and leaving uh, the MPLS network and going back out to customer A here. This big cloud here, MPLS, as far as customer A at both ends is concerned is either a big switch or a big router. Okay, but it's after the, uh, so the packets are labeled by the ingress router. And at that point, the MPLS network doesn't have to do any routing table lookup. Uh, they are all going to use the, uh, there's gonna be a label added and removed, uh, removed and added at each hop. We're gonna show you an example of this in just a moment. So only the edge LSRs as the information, as the packet comes into the MPLS uh, cloud and as it exits the MPLS cloud, that's the only place where routing lookups have to happen as far as MPLS goes. Uh, the, again, the non edge L, uh, LSRs, label switch routers, forward everything based on the label, not on layer three information. So this is gonna make everything happen much faster. Uh, uh, the final edge, uh, edge LSR here, the egress L LSR will, what we say pops, removes the uh, label from the packet. We'll see all this in just a moment. And we'll actually perform a routing table lookup since it's taken the label off and we'll route it to the customer. Okay, so uh, MPLS is, uh, the label is known as a two and a half <laughs> between layer two and layer three. So it's known as layer two and a half or layer 2.5. That label gets shimmed, uh, in, put in between the layer two frame and the IP header in this case. So let's take a look at how all this kind of works here. So uh, let's take a look starting at router R6 forwarding a packet to R5. Okay, so R6 has it, and it's going to say, oh, I have a packet to send to 192.168.1. something or other. Let's say it's going to the 1.0 network. And it says, I send that out my serial interface, serial zero interface. So it gets routed and sent to router R5. Okay, so it looks it up in the routing table. Uh, R6 just sends it as a uh, layer three IP packet encapsulating the layer two frame, whether this connection here is layer two, uh, and R5 receives it. 
Okay, so R5 now receives it. This is the Ingress Edge LSR. Now it looks it up and it says, okay, this uh, came in. Uh, I look up 192.1.0. 1, 1, uh, 192, 1 .1 I might have said 168 previously because I'm used to saying 168. 192, 1.1.0 uh, looks it up and it uh, says, okay, I'm going to send this out serial zero, but uh, I'm in LSR. This is going into my MPLS cloud. I'm going to attach, as you can see here, uh, label 94. Okay, so I'm going to put a label. So it came in as this, and I'm shimming a label of 94, and I'm sending it out my serial zero interface. This is the, the out. It came in on this interface. Uh, it's going to, I might have said, came in on serial zero. Excuse me if I did. Uh, and I'm going to send it out serial zero and put a label 94 on it. So it does that. Puts a label 94, sends it out serial zero. Okay. Our router R4 receives it. It says, okay. Anything I get for, uh, I get on serial one with a label of 94. Uh, I see my Cisco, I'm, hopefully that's not in the video. I'm not affecting this video, but my VPN just reconnected. Okay, anyway, uh, anything coming in on serial one with a uh, label of 94, I'm gonna send out serial zero with a label of 17. It's that simple. Yes, came in on 90, label 94, came in on serial one. I'm just going, so what I'm going to do is remove that pop, take that label off and put a new label of 17. So all it's doing is looking at one, looking at where it came in and what the label is and says if it came in on serials, if it came in on serial one with label 94, I'm going to give it a label of 17 and send it out serial zero. So it sends it out serial zero. R3 gets it, does the same thing. It says, hey, it came in on serial one with a label of 17. My MPLS table tells me I need to uh, send it out serial zero with a label of five. So there's no routing lookup done here. It just says this is what it came in on with this label. This is what I'm, I'm putting a, uh, new label on and sending it out this interface. Okay, so R2 gets it. R2 gets it, goes, oh, I'm a, it looks like this has to leave the MPLS cloud. It came in on uh, serial one with a label of five. Uh, this is, uh, so now I've actually got to look this up in the routing table because I'm popping the label off and look it up and I've got to send it out my ethernet zero interface. Okay, and customer A gets it and receives it on its ethernet zero interface or whatever interface it's using. It looks like uh, ethernet zero and we'll route it accordingly. There we go. All right. So that's a little bit about uh, what it looks like inside the, uh, the, uh, M, uh, the provider's network, a lot of fiber optics. Uh, MPLS is also very popular and there's some uh, other technologies that are also coming around, uh, EPLS and some other things. All right, so uh, I hope that helps and I look forward to talking to you in more videos.